Hey guys, it's Jamie from Rubicon Models here and today I'd like to welcome you to our video painting up Mindstoke 3G. Now we're going to be painting this up to a high wall gaming standard and I hope that you enjoy the video. I do hope you'll get involved in the discussion and check out the links below. There's a link to our Facebook group, to our forums and to our distribution list. So should you choose to pick up a model, please post it, share it with us. And what we'll do is we'll pop it into a Rubicon community video and share it with the wider community. See you guys shortly. So guys, let's paint this tank up. First step after priming this out with a grey primer is to apply Dunkel Galb dark base from Ammo of Mig Jimenez and I apply this where any two panels meet and around any hatches and right at the bottom of the side armour plates. I also use it around the rolled wheels and the bottom of the hull of the tank and I don't cover the entire miniature with that, perhaps maybe a third at most. And we're going to be working our way up through the modulation set so the next colour we apply is Dunkel Gale Base from Ammo of Mig Jimenez and we apply this to any areas where there's grey still showing and I like to feather out the shadow colour by applying a bit of this on top of that as we get a nice pre-shading effect. Now with Dunkel Gelb guys there are variations within the wall. If you want to paint a lighter Dunkel Gelb please do and use more of the highlight colours. If you want to keep it darker use more of the Dunkel Gelb base colour. Ammo of Mick Jimenez also makes two colours that I don't use which are Dunkel Gelb Shadow and Dunkel Gelb Shine. So if you want to do it really light, use Dunkel Gelb Shine, and if you want to keep it dark, use Dunkel Gelb Shadow. And the next step that I do on the miniature is to use Dunkel Gelb Light Base from Ammo of Mig Jimenez, and I apply this at the centre of panels, at the top of side armour, just to create interest. It's not really the most realistic of shading effects, but it looks pleasing on the table, and it's going to make the miniature pop. And finally I use Dunkel Gelb Highlight from Ammo of Mig Jimenez and I use this really on the most extreme panels and what I really like about this colour it gives it a bit of a faded sun bleached effect to my tank. My tank's representing a tank in 1943 spring so it's going to have been in the rain and the sun. It's going to be a bit bleached and the colour's going to have been affected by that. How much of this you use is up to you and by applying more than one there you can make the colour more noticeable. Now I've masked the miniature using a low tap putty called Panzer Putty and the finger off a latex glove. I've left very little area showing as there's very little green on the camo I'm basing the picture off. Now I apply MIG Amar Worn Effects on any areas showing because I'm going to be chipping the green to show the Dunkel Gelb underneath. I use Dark Green by Ammo of Mig Jimenez and I apply this to all the areas where I want green. Again, picture I'm basing this off, there is very little green actually on the vehicle as it's in the early stages of the use of camouflage. Panzer Putty guys is really great because it's not going to pull off any of the Dunkel Gal paint which blue tack sometimes can do if I haven't varnished the miniature. Now I'm going to be highlighting that dark green with Olive Grun Low Highlight from Ammo of Mig Jimenez. I'm only using two colours for the green because they're in such small areas I find that this is enough to give the contrast needed. Now as I do tanks from later in the wall, in later videos, I will be doing more complicated camo schemes so please be sure to come back and check them out. Okay. I've used some water to chip the green, especially in areas around hatches and a couple of bits on the side of the vehicle. I really like the modulation that's going on. Just pointing out here guys, where I've paid special attention to the top of the vehicle where the crew will be climbing about and entering the hatches. Now sometimes with camouflage, it can look a bit like the miniature is a painted model rather than a realistic one. So what I like to do is apply a filter to the model. So what I'm doing first is I'm varnishing it with satin varnish from Liquitex just to protect what I've done so far from the white spirit in the filter, but also to make sure that I don't do any more chips. 
I use the filter designed for free tone camo from Ammo by Mick Jimenez. And you apply this all over the miniature, but you don't want it to pour. Basically, it tints the colour and adds all sorts of tones in there. It makes it look realistic and it's a bit hard to see in a video and also in some photographs, but it does really add to the camouflage effect. Now, once this is completed, I'm going to be applying decals. I use water and a brush and very carefully just apply decals where I want them on the model and manipulate them around with the brush until they're in a position where I'm happy. I then wait for the water to dry and then I'm going to be coming back and applying decal fixer and decal softener via my airbrush onto the miniature. Now you can apply these via hand but sometimes I find that I accidentally move the decals. just wanted to show you guys what decals I've used. From the image I'm basing the tank on, there were no numbers so I've just used the Balkan cross. This is fine because it's going to leave loads of blank space for weathering later on. Now before moving on to weathering, I like to paint all the metallic areas and grey areas on the tank. Roll wheels will receive a coat of German grey from Vallejo and metallic areas will receive a base coat of German grey as well. So this includes the tracks and any metallic areas on the tools on the body of the tank. German grey is a great colour as a base coat for metallic areas because when you apply a metallic paint over the top it's going to look like you've already done the shading. So it's nice, quick and easy guys. I also use German grey and a bit of sponge to create some chipping effect and the way you do this is you simply put a bit of blister sponge with some German grey, wipe most of the German grey off and then apply it to the model in a dabbing motion. It's important that you do it like this because if you are to drag that sponge across it's going to create almost a painted effect rather than a chipping effect so you really want to make sure that you're just dabbing it on and take your time with this guys. I dab all the road wheels because I figured out that the scenery in Russia would actually scratch them and I also apply some to hatches as well. Then the next step is to paint wooden areas and for this I use chocolate brown from Vallejo with a highlight of beige brown also from Vallejo model colour. Now it's a bit hard to show this because of the position that I have to have my hand in when I'm painting these and I apologise for that guys. Okay, I apply a dry brush of Vallejo gun metal to the tracks and to any metallic areas. Before finally varnishing the miniature and applying a dark brown wash for yellow vehicles from Ammo of Mick Jimenez. Now it's an enamel wash which is why I've had to gloss varnish the miniature first in order to protect the paint that I've done. And basically what I'm going to be doing is using another brush with some odorless thinner or some white spirit to remove excess wash. So enamel washes guys they're really controllable and you're only going to have them in the recess areas. Here I'm just showing you how to use a cotton wool board soaked in a little bit of odorless thinner in order to take off excess wash. It's really quick, it's really easy and if I was painting for between of these tanks, this is a great way to add shading really quickly. I really enjoy working with Ammo of McKimenez products because I find that their system of modulation, wash, filter and streaking is really easy to follow to achieve good results quite quickly. Some people do go further for display tanks, but the majority of the time I'm painting high war gaming standard and I think that's achievable quite easy with Ammo by Mick Jimenez. I'm going to be applying two colours of streaks and that's dark streaking grime and rain marks. Again, both of these are from Ammo of Mick Jimenez. And to begin with, I use a round brush and just apply some streaks onto the miniature. I leave these to dry for a bit, but depending on how warm it is in your hobby room, you might want to not leave it as long as I did. And I'm going to be taking a soft edge brush, dampen with a little bit of odorless thinner and I'm just going to feather them out. How much you do this is going to make the streaks less noticeable and as I like to paint my tanks quite realistically I do this quite a lot. 
just to make sure that the colours underneath are showing through. I'm really sorry I'm out of shot a little bit here guys. Please bear with me. And now I feel like we're ready for some mud effects. For this I use dark mud from Ammo of Mick Jimenez mixed with some plaster. And on my last video I received a question about how much do I mix the plaster to the enamel. That completely depends on the sort of effect that you want. For heavier mud you use more plaster. And for lighter mud like what I'm doing here I've used more enamel. It's really hard to give a figure. It also depends on how thick the enamel paint is, how long you've had it for. What I do recommend is that you test it before applying it onto the miniature. I take a cotton wool bud and I also splatter some mud onto the miniature up the sides of the vehicle and the front and the back. It's important that you don't use the brush in a brushing motion when applying this stuff because otherwise it's going to be noticeable that it's being brushed on. You want to be dabbing it so that it looks random as mud would be. Get any in areas you don't want it, just use a brush with some white spirit and remove. And now we're ready for some pigment work. I'm going to apply some black smoke pigment to the tip of the gun, but I'm also going to be applying some Meek Productions dark mud all over the top of the vehicle, especially at the back where tank riders sit and on any hatches where I feel the crew will be walking around getting in and out of the vehicle. I apply some of this dark mud pigment also to the mud effect on the tracks. And the reason for that is just to create some different tones in there so it doesn't all look the same. Now when using these pigments it's always best to use a dry brush otherwise it's just going to pull. And now the miniature is ready for a final varnish. For this I use a mixture of satin and matte. I find if I use too much matte the contrast disappears a little bit and if I use pure satin it doesn't quite have the flat effect I want. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see some of your own work. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.